car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Contestants ready? Go! Oh, don't make a mess. No, 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 no! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. I get bladder leaks. I didn't want to feel like I was wearing the pads I wore when I was 12. Then I tried the always discreet pads. They fit perfectly in the place they're supposed to. Look how much it holds. And it still stays thin. It's the protection we deserve. Tomorrow, we are on the ground in Georgia for Benifer's second wedding. Plus. Blake Shelton brings back his mullet. Only we are behind the scenes of his new, but in a way old, music video. I didn't get the memo that the 90s had ended until about two. Happening now. The newest high school in the Northside ISD ready to open its doors to students. Coming up, we got a sneak peek at Sotha Marriott High School. We'll tell you what's expected from this school year. The political back and forth between the mayor of New York City and the governor of Texas is growing over the busing of migrants to the East Coast. What the mayor is accusing Governor Greg Abbott of doing and his response next. And it's nice to see some rain activity developing on the radar screen. We'll take a look at the showers and storms, how much is falling and where, and talks of more rain chances in the days ahead. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, we're following some breaking news that's happening at the Bear County Jail. The sheriff's office telling us several people could be facing charges related to an injury to a person case. Now, this is something we've been watching for the past hour and a half or so. We're waiting to get more details. We do have a crew at the scene and we will provide an update as that information comes in. Meantime, the search continues for a teen who ran away from CPS custody here in San Antonio. Her name is Alexis Sorrentino, but she goes by Marissa. She's believed to be in the Austin area and may be in danger. If you have any information on her whereabouts, you can call 911. A San Antonio couple is dead after they were hit by a suspected drunk driver near Port Aransas over the weekend. It happened on Saturday night along Highway 361 on Mustang Island. Corpus Christi police say a 24 year old man named Dylan Holland crashed his pickup truck into a car, killing the 44 year old driver and 42 year old passenger who were headed to Port Aransas. A relative tells case the victims are Juan and Angel Segundo. The suspect now charged with two counts of intoxication manslaughter. We have an update on a 2019 murder involving a woman who killed a man she met on social media. The suspect, 26-year-old Elisa Cantu, sentenced to 40 years in prison. She pleaded guilty to the murder of Mark Anthony Ramirez, whom she killed in July of 2019. The two had met on social media on a website called Moco Space. They arranged for a meetup for drinks, and when Ramirez picked Cantu up, she shot him in the head. His body was found on the side of the road. Investigators later found blood and a bullet casing inside his SUV. Detectives also said Cantu had pawned some of Ramirez's jewelry. A 41-year-old man will spend 35 years in prison for a 2019 crash that killed two people. On Monday, Joseph Robles accepted a plea deal on charges related to the deaths of Nikki De La Fuente and Calvin Hitchcock. They died in April 2019. Robles alleged to have been using methamphetamine before he fell asleep while driving, drifted off the road, and rolled the vehicle on 181. He received two 35-year sentences that will run concurrently. We are still working to learn the name of a man who died while crossing Loop 410 last night. San Antonio police say the victim was hit by a driver near Cento Road, near Old Pearsall Road on the southwest side. The driver did not stay on the scene. However, this hit and run triggered a secondary crash. While officers were working the scene, another vehicle hit the patrol unit from behind. No officers were hurt, but the people in the other vehicle were taken to the hospital. It is now unclear if that driver will face charges. Let's take a live look with TransGuy. Check on your evening commute on this Thursday evening. Take a look there at I-10 at the Y. No trouble to report there. Looks like a little slowdown there in the right-hand lanes as people head home. New at 5, Northside ISD set to open its 12th high school when classes start on Monday. Sonia Sotomayor High School, located on the far west side near Culebra and Gom Road. Our RJ Marquez got a first-hand look at the new high school today that was built to keep up with the growing population in that area. He tells us what students and staff can expect in year one of this brand new campus.
Crews are hard at work getting the newest high school in the Northside School District ready for students and teachers. So I'm just excited for them to come in and build those solid, uh, you know, solid foundation and those traditions. Sonia Sotomayor High School was part of the 2018 Northside ISD bond. It will pull students mostly from Harlan and O'Connor High Schools in one of the fastest growing areas in San Antonio. There is a lot of subdivisions going up right next to our, our area here and uh, obviously another apartment complex off of 1560. So I do expect that our numbers will go up up in enrollment. Sotomayor will be the third high school in NISD to have a security lobby at the front entrance. The lobby is bullet resistant and automatically locks in the morning before classes start. No one comes into the campus without our permission. So that being said, we also have two officers, full-time officers on campus. Approximately 1,700 students will be walking through the doors here at Sotomayor High School when school starts on August 22nd. This campus was built on 75 acres of land, making it already one of the largest in Northside ISD. There will be no senior students this year, but the school will offer the same programs as others in the district. We will have all the advanced courses, AP courses, dual classes, on-ramp classes, and so we will be able to, you know, honor all those courses for our kids. But what makes Sotomayor different will be a focus on renewable energy for incoming freshmen. The first course is the entry level to renewable energy, robotics, and also engineering. And the new high school is nearly fully staffed with a few positions that will be filled by substitute teachers to start the year. Every teacher that we hired is highly qualified and I'm excited. They all invested the time over the summer to come in. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. So close today, just about so far, preliminarily speaking, 99, one degree shy of triple digits. The average high 96, the record 105. That was set back in 1909. Eagle Pass now 97, Floresville around 100 degrees, and for the most part, upper 90s to right around 100, even Lavernia at 101. Here's some radar activity out there, some development, especially east of San Antonio, northern Gonzales County, moving into Lavaca County. We'll take a closer look at this shower activity in just a bit and talk about the odds of this outflow boundary popping up a thunder shower locally. Uh, coming up after the break, but some widely separated activity expected this evening. Temperatures then falling through the 80s. We'll see in a little bit and talking about a more promising weather pattern for rain chances ahead. We'll time that out for you. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Adam. Now to that bitter battle between Texas Governor Greg Abbott and New York City Mayor Eric Adams over immigration policy. Undocumented immigrants arriving in Washington, D.C. and New York now caught in the middle of a political spat. ABC's Morgan Norwood has a story. The battle between the governor of Texas and New York City's mayor over the busing of undocumented immigrants from Texas to New York City is intensifying. It comes as Texas Governor Greg Abbott continues to send busloads of men, women, and children from the Lone Star State, dropping them off in cities like Washington, D.C. and New York, saying the Biden administration's policies inadequately secure the border, forcing other states to bear the burden. New York City officials estimate that more than 2,800 undocumented immigrants have arrived from Texas and Arizona. New York City's Mayor Eric Adams calling out Governor Greg Abbott, who's running for re-election, accusing him of using them as political pawns. He thinks that this is a the theatrical performance, and it's not. These are real lives. Governor Greg Abbott on Nightline firing back. He's really nothing more than a hypocrite. New York City is a self-declared sanctuary city. But at the heart of this dispute is whether these cities have enough resources to take in thousands of people at a time. The mayor of D.C. has asked the federal government for help. In a letter written last month obtained by ABC News, Mayor Muriel Bowser asking the federal government to support her request for the D.C. National Guard to assist with what she describes as, quote, growing humanitarian crisis. The Department of Homeland Security admitting it has work to do in securing the U.S. southern border. The U.S., though, set to surpass more than two million encounters along the border by the end of the fiscal year. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And right now we are still waiting on the decision from a federal judge in Florida who is contemplating releasing the affidavit that allowed the FBI to raid former President Donald Trump's Florida home. And after spending more than an hour listening to the arguments from both sides, that judge has now asked the DOJ to submit the affidavit with proposed redactions. That needs to be in by next Thursday. The DOJ has been fighting against unsealing the affidavits affidavit rather, saying that it will compromise the investigation. However, lawyers representing media companies want it unsealed, as does former President Trump. 
think it's virtually zero chance that it will be re released. And if it is, it'll be substantially redacted. DOJ says, you know, if we redact what needs to come out of it, because remember, we're talking potential espionage here based on the warrant, uh, serious national security interests, it would be worthless. It wouldn't mean anything. It has now been 10 days since the raid at Mar-a-Lago. We know 27 boxes were taken from the home, including 11 that contained classified information. Now to the monkey box public health emergency. The White House now working to ship more than a million more doses of vaccine to health agencies all across the country. That increase in doses is the result of the FDA authorizing a new monkeypox strategy, injecting a smaller dose more shallowly than how it was originally supposed to be administered. Right now, it's unclear how many states will be taking this new approach. This is a precious resource that we want to be used efficiently and wisely. So we're really moving to get all jurisdictions to intradermal dosing. We're also learning more about who is becoming most impacted by monkeypox. CDC data now shows black and brown populations are facing significantly higher case rates proportionally as compared to white Americans. The number of people looking to buy homes is continuing to drop and analysts believe it's because prices and mortgage rates are still too high. Mortgage rates did, however, fall by 0.1% compared to last week. Right now, it's at 5.1% for a 30-year fixed rate. The median price for a home last month was just under $404,000. That's up more than 10% from last year. Also, the cost of diesel is down. That's good news from truckers and farmers. The national average fell to $4.99 a gallon. That's according to AAA. It is the first time diesel prices have been below $5 since early March. The cost of gas is down too right now. The average cost $3.93 nationwide. Texans paying about $3.46. And here in Bear County, we're paying on average about $3.35. A heads up, HEB is holding a one day hiring event next week. On site interviews are going to be conducted at every HEB Central Market and Meet the End That store in Texas. It's going on on Tuesday, August 23rd from 10 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon. And they are looking to fill store level positions. You must be 16 years or older to apply, but in some cases, the roles have a minimum age requirement of 18. For more information, head over to KSAT.com. Even though gas prices are declining, more and more people are considering electric vehicles. We're going to take a look at some of the other benefits besides avoiding those skyrocketing gas prices when we come back. Myra Arthur here live in the KSAT 12 newsroom. Today on the News at 6, they are tasked with connecting people experiencing homelessness with services to help get them off the streets. But the city's homeless outreach team, it's dealing with staffing issues. Garrett Berger takes us on a ride along to give you a glimpse of what this job is really like. Plus, it is a first. The city says it now has a grant for businesses impacted by street construction and the pandemic. But the deadline to apply for that help is coming up fast. Jesse DeGoyato explains what you need to know to get your business some of that assistance. And the trial of a former Border Patrol agent accused of murdering four women in Webb County will be moved to Bear County. But how that trial will play out here is somewhat up in the air. We're getting a better idea of the logistics today, plus when jury selection is expected to begin. Those stories and more coming your way today at 6. Thank you, Myra. New today at five, electric vehicles. Seems like they're looking more and more attractive, especially considering the price of gas. But is an EV right for you? 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris has information that might help you decide. Now that it's costing 50 bucks to gas up the average tank, could a plug-in be your next car? Yes, because gas is way too expensive now. In a recent Consumer Report survey, more than one third of people said they would strongly consider buying an electric car. Many of the barriers of going electric are beginning to come down. Battery range is increasing and there are more models now, but some people have reservations. 
With traveling, it's just getting to where I gotta go and back without having to charge up my car. I just don't think I'm ready for it yet. Where and when to charge is a concern. This one is located right outside a department store. Right now in Texas, there are more than 2,000 public charging stations. Money is another barrier. People point to purchase price and the cost of repairs. But compared to the typical lifespan of a gas car, Consumer Reports found EVs usually cost less to operate. EVs have fewer moving parts and fluids that need to be changed. Even the brakes tend to last longer. Plus, the cost of powering the car is less, especially with elevated gas prices. And now mainstream automakers are creating lower priced models like the Hyundai Kona, Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Bolt. It starts at less than 27,000. And some electric vehicles are eligible for a $7,500 federal tax credit and a $2,500 state rebate. But not all EVs qualify, so check before you buy. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a live look outside with Sky 12, high above a place I know quite well. That is O.P. Schnabel Park on the northwest side. Spent a little time there walking the dog this morning before it got too hot. And humid. Yeah, it Ow. is. It was very humid this Thick morning. out there, Adam. Yeah, and I uh, start some mountain bikes, mountain bike riding around there too as well and hit the uh, Leon Creek Greenway and whatnot. Anyway, I want to take a look at radar. We have some activity out there, just nothing over San Antonio, at least not yet. We mentioned this earlier. I want to zoom in on the heaviest rain and the most prominent here in our area. We're talking northern Gonzales County near I-10 moving into parts of Lavaca County, even Schulenburg getting clipped right now, but this is some heavy rainfall moving right toward Moulton. So some good rain in northeastern Gonzales County that is right along I-10 and even city of Gonzales. It's good to see this right here. Look at this heavy downpour. We can get right down into the city and you can see the heavy rainfall right in the heart of the city of Gonzales. And this isn't going to last very long, but it's better than nothing. A little splash and dash. We'll take it and elsewhere across Gonzales County, a few little showers even stretching into Guadalupe County. Now here's what's important. This green line that you see left to right across your screen. That's the outflow boundary from pre existing storms and this outflow boundary has been moving through. It just hasn't been all that efficient at generating showers yet here in San Antonio. So here's the outflow boundary. It's this green line and we talk about these a lot. We see them quite a bit and it's pushing southward at about 20 miles per hour. And this is acting like a little mini front, a lifting mechanism to lift up the air and get things going. And this should, <laughs> there's the key word, should, all the ingredients are there, it should happen, should generate some downpours in and around Bear County and San Antonio within the next hour. If we don't see any development by 6 or 630 locally, then I think it's a bust for us. But the ingredients are there. We've got the moisture. We've got the instability. And now we have the lifting mechanism. We just need Mother Nature to cooperate. So come on, Mother Nature, cooperate with us here. Anyway, up in Kerr County, at least we have some areas of heavy rainfall gradually drifting their way southward on into Bandera County. All right, let's take a look at our future cast. And well, it's on board. It thinks the ingredients are there and it should be happening as well for some pockets of heavy rain around San Antonio over the next hour or two. And then some of it pushing south of town into Atascosa County by eight, nine o'clock before generally dissipating, but still can't rule out a rogue stray shower later on tonight. Tomorrow, we start the day mostly cloudy, then a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day into the afternoon. A few isolated showers likely to pop up, probably not as much as what we see on the radar screen today, but I know so far we haven't seen a whole lot on the radar screen today, at least not as much as what we're anticipating to develop. Let's put it that way, but still one or two pop ups for a few lucky neighborhoods I do think are likely tomorrow and then rain chances fall off as we get into the weekend. So 30% tomorrow, then just a 10 to 20% chance this weekend, mainly closer to the Gulf Coast. Monday, 20%, it's next week, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. We've got us up to 40% and I'm tempted to raise those chances a little bit higher. I just need a little more time, but the pattern's looking more favorable for some decent rainfall and some soaking showers into next week. And not as a result of this swirl of moisture over the Yucatan Peninsula that's moving into the Gulf. That should stay far to the south of us. Outside right now, we're at 93 degrees. The outflow moved through, dropped our temperature from 99 to 93. A boundary to the north of us, 80s in North Texas, behind that wheat cool front, but still 101 in Catula, Pleasanton at 100. And tomorrow, 
tomorrow we start the day at 76, make it up to 95. By the afternoon, we have that 30% chance, so some isolated showers. And I know we're only one day away from that 100 degree day record. Looks like we'll be below 100 over the next seven days, but promising rain chances next week especially. Looks great, Adam. Thank you so much. All right, Greg, Deshaun Watson coming up with a settlement or an agreement with the NFL on his punishment. Yes, and it is more than what the original hearing officer recommended, but at the same time, there's still a lot of people out there who believe it is not enough. When we come back, we'll let you know what that is. And does UT have a starting quarterback yet? <laughs> coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Houston Texan, now Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson has agreed to an 11 game suspension and a $5 million fine for violating the NFL's personal code of conduct agreement here. The agreement has been approved by the NFL and the Players Association it will mean that Watson's first game back from his suspension will be ironically against the Houston Texans. Watson at first was given a six game suspension without pay by disciplinary officer Sue L. Robinson, but the league appealed the penalty, believing it needed to be at least a year, but has now settled on 11 games suspension. Watson had been sued by 25 women claiming sexual assault during massages. We are now just over two weeks away from the start of the college football season. UT head football coach Steve Sarkeesian is still not ready to name his starting quarterback. It has come down to Hudson Card and Ohio State transfer and South Lake Carroll product Quinn Hewers to kick off of the season against Louisiana Monroe set for September the 3rd in Royal Memorial Stadium before hosting Alabama and then UTSA. Sarkeesian was asked to describe the competition between the two. I would say it's tight. Um, I would say both guys are working very hard. Um, they both got great attitudes. I've actually talked to both of them separately just about their kind of their mindset, the room, how they're working with and, and with one another, but yet competing with one another. Um, but I think they both are, are, are operating and doing it at a high level. And I think both of them recognize man, there's room for me to improve. All right, kick off in the season open, and Austin is set for 7 p.m. Our big game coverage previews take us to the campus of Southwest Legacy High School, which is home to the Titans. Head coach Robert Bruce is welcoming back nine starters, six on offense, three on defense, off a team that went undefeated in the district at 6-0 last season and finished 10-2 as area finalists. That was the Titans' first ever district championship in school history. Among the returning starters on offense is all-district first-teamer running back Fernando Flores and on defense, Jay Tryron Connor. If we think I we're all, all that we're gonna get beat like we need to keep on grinding and working like these past two years were great but this year is what it's all about. We had a, uh, some young players that are going to be happy to step up and play, and hopefully they can carry on the tradition with that leadership to continue the tradition that we got going on here. Uh, my kids work hard, and they, they fly around to the football, so hopefully we can continue that tradition. That's our plan. All right, the Titans kick off their season one week from this Friday against Burbank at 7 p.m., and the actual season kicks off one week from today. <laughs> High school football in San Antonio, South Texas. Looking forward to it. Good luck to all those athletes. You got it. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. I want to update you. We are still waiting on an update for the breaking news situation we told you about at the top of the show at last check. We are told the suspects are still being interviewed by Bear County Sheriff's deputies. And all of this has to do with an injury to a person's case. We've received some information, but we don't want to run with that right now. We want to wait till everything's confirmed. Camelia Juarez is at the Bear County Jail. She's going to have an update for you as soon as that information comes in, hopefully next on KSAT 12 News at 6. Meantime, thank you so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next. See you back here at 6.